Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And in today's video, I hope this to be a quick and simple restoration of this floor lamp back to safe and uh, reliable condition. Decorator lamps are very seldom marked by the manufacturer. This one is similar to a style stiffle sold, and they always mark theirs, but I haven't found any marks on this. The base and this uh, piece right here are both brass plated pot metal. This is a steel pipe that's brass plated. Even this little uh, decorative item here with these balls, these are also pot metal that are plated brass. And the candle cup is uh, plated steel, uh, brass plated steel. One strange thing is this hole that's uh, been roughly punched into the candle cup. No idea what that's all about. Well, this hasn't turned out to be as uh, simple and easy a job as I had hoped for. The uh, lamp is now finished. The customers come and picked it up before I discovered that quite a few video clips uh, somehow got lost. This included the clip where I explained that someone had uh, rewired this lamp with a regular shell socket. Now shell sockets are made to come apart where if you press right here, the bottom comes off. And that's pretty good because you can wire it up and you can stick it back down in there and twist it tight. However, it means that you can't get this piece back out without damaging it. The uh, correct socket for this kind of application is called a hickey socket where the uh, this bracket on the bottom, the hickey, comes off and you can wire it and then pull it back down and fasten it to the hickey. And we will now resume our regular video. Now at this point, I think I've kind of given up on the simple and easy part of the restoration. Because what's happening here, instead of the socket base unscrewing, the pipe is coming out of the base of the whole lamp. Not a total disaster, but just a little more work than I was expecting to do. Now I've got this clamped up in the vise, and fortunately this pipe's not going to be seen, so I can clamp it as tight as I want to and not have to worry about marking it. Put some of this penetrating oil in here. Let's see if I can grab a hold of this thing and get it to come loose. Something's turning. Now I understand why there's a hole punched in the side of this piece. This socket has a little screw on the neck which locks it in place. Wish I'd seen that a little sooner. But it's not making it much easier to take off. As I said, really can't get them out without damaging them. And the latest secret they have for us is this originally was a hickey socket. This piece on the bottom is called a hickey. Uh, no idea why. Maybe it was invented by Lorenzo J. Hickey. Who can say? Okay, I've got the pole back together and we're back on the floor. Now, the reason I'm using a hickey socket for this is because down deep in this uh, cup, it's impossible to attach the uh, wires, but the socket comes off the hickey, so it can be installed. The wire pulled up through here, attach it, and then pull it back down. Very neat way to do this. Now that I have the hickey installed, I'm going to have to pull the cord up through the pipe 
And to do that, I'm going to fish it through with this and wonderful stuff called baling wire. Sometimes called mechanics wire these days because it's not used for baling hay anymore. And the uh, story on this stuff is, is that the earliest hay baling machines had big spools of baling wire and the machine automatically tied it around hay bales. When it came time to use the bales, there was always a big pile of cut baling wire left over. And nobody wants to waste good wire, so they would try to wrap it up around a board or something. And of course, it had sharp ends, and it was already twisted a couple times. And that's what became known as hay wire. So baling wire, something very useful, and hay wire, not much use at all. The most important part of pulling a wire up through a lamp is to put it through the hole in the base before you get started. I cannot believe how many times someone has looked and seen that they had left that step out and you have to start all over again. The next thing you do is you take the wire and you tie a knot in it because that will jam up against the inside of this hole and that's going to prevent the uh, lamp cord from being jerked out of the lamp if somebody trips over it in the dark. Now to attach the baling wire to the cord, I've punched a hole between the two uh, wires, pull it through here like I'm putting a worm on a hook, bend it down, get it nice and flat, want as uh, narrow a profile as possible because it's got to go through a narrow spot up there and I put a piece of masking tape around it just to keep the ends of the wires from snagging and the last thing I do beeswax furniture polish on the end here I'm going to need a little bit of lubricant going through that rough wire, and this should be enough right there. And one of the advantages of using a lamp clamp is I can grab both ends of the wire at the same time and just simply tug it all the way up to the top. Now the lamp clamp lets me hold this in a convenient position for wiring the socket, and that's fairly straightforward. Cord sold for lamps and lighting in the United States and North America comes with these two wires joined together in the middle. One side has ridges on the insulation. You can feel them with your finger if you can't see them. And the other side is smooth. And that tells us which wire goes where. As you'll see, we've got a brass colored screw and a silver colored screw. And the smooth wire always goes under the brass screw. This is especially important in table lamps because that's a safety measure since this screw goes through the switch. This screw goes to the, the uh, socket shell. And we all have the little plugs that go into the wall that have one side as wide as the other, so they only go in one way. And what that ensures is that the hot wire, which they call hot wire, goes here, goes to this center, ter center terminal. The other wire, called the neutral, goes to the shell and what this means is if you're in the dark and you go to turn on a lamp and it doesn't have a bulb in it if you touch the shell you won't get shocked of course if you stick your finger all the way down in there and the switches turn on I can't promise you anything you're probably going to get shocked now the next part is just what I call a fiddly bit I've got to get this screw here into the screw hole in the hickey so I mark on the edge of the socket there where the hickey actually is so that I can have a better chance of getting them to line up down in a place where I can't actually see what's going on and just once it's seated in place usually the screw will go right in and it'll sit I think that's it. The last step 
is to put in the paper insulator, always important. And then install the key, and because of this candle cup here, I'm going to need a little short extension so that it'll reach all the way in. These are available in different lengths. This one is half inch. Okay, and that's just about it. Well, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory, and I appreciate you sitting through this uh, video with me. I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Comments are always welcome. I answer all questions about any kind of lighting repair, furniture repair, uh, Greek philosophy, anything like that. So please, uh, look forward to hearing from you, and I hope you watch.